All right, now this is the point of no return. Hey, it's Greg here with Outdoors on the Cheap. And today, I'm gonna to show you how to stuff a Honda Ruckus in the back of a Honda Pilot SUV. Now, I mean, I'm just doing the SUV in general here. So just to give you a sense of dimensions here, my total height in terms of the hole is three feet. This is three feet wide by uh, about 49 inches. Four, let's say 48 to be safe. So it's four feet by three feet. Uh, if you're in metric, just do the conversion, just Google it. Um, and I guess very briefly, I'll answer the question, why am I doing this? Why am I not using a trailer or, uh, or have some sort of bike rack at the back, which are both options? Uh, this is cheaper. This is outdoors in the cheap. This is cheaper. Also, this uh, SUV, which I bought used for $4,000, had a whole bunch of welding done uh, on the frame in the back, and you can attach a trailer hitch to it. Just won't. You can't legally <laughs> attach a trailer hitch to it. Uh, so my option is to sell this and replace it with something that'll take a hitch or be a little bit creative. So uh, I just got a door, to hard, basically one of the banged up cheap doors at the hardware store and did a little few modifications to it. And, uh, and this is how I get it in, in the back because uh, a Honda Ruckus weighs uh, about 200 pounds. And uh, you can't just pick that up. You, you would need help uh, for, you know, it's basically at least a, a two person job, two reasonably strong people to put it in the back of a vehicle like this. And uh, really, uh, you know, this is a one person thing. You gotta be able to put it in and take it out because you're going, um, I'm using this vehicle to take, go down logging roads, to go fishing and hunting and things like that, just to access uh, remote places that uh, I can't take this vehicle down because some, the logging roads here in Canada used to be maintained by the government and then the government stopped. So they're just sort of slowly falling apart, but they're still accessible. And I mean, you know, a dirt bike's a good thing. An ATV is a good thing. There's lots of different options. And I'm gonna do a whole video on why I went with uh, Honda uh, Ruckus, uh, but mainly it's the cheapest option. You can get a brand new Honda Ruckus for under $5,000. Uh, and you basically got a very reliable, easy to use vehicle for a pretty low cost. So that's why I went with that. But anyway, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother video. How am I doing this here? And I'm doing this here using pulleys and rope, right? Cause that way you can be stronger than you are. And I think the way I've set this up here, it, it basically uh, reduces the weight or the, the force required by me by uh, to one third, right? So instead of me having to move, you know, whatever, some portion of this weight, it's, it's greatly reduced, right? So I don't have to be quite as strong. Uh, so step one, uh, let me just show you how I've rigged up all my ropes here. <laughs> and there's a lot of trial and error trying to figure this out. So let me uh, bring the camera in a little closer here. And let me show you what's going on. All right, so I got a door and I mean, I just needed some sort of cleat for manipulating the door. And I wasn't sure when I was setting this up where I needed them. I, I think just having one down, facing the vehicle here, having one down here and one up here is all you need, basically, a, a, you know, an, an attachment point, right? So all I did here was just, um, as you can see, just get some rope and just screwed it in with a screwdriver, <laughs> right? Uh, the door, like most doors, it doesn't have a lot of meat on it, so I uh, glued and screwed on these pieces of one by three on either side. I also have one going down the middle here, just to give it some extra rigidity you know, anything will do, just this was really cheap because it was a banged up door. Um, down here, this is an important thing. Once you get the vehicle on there, I mean, you're putting it on on a slope so it wants to slide down, so you need a means to stop it. And I found just having this thing ready to go. I got a couple pieces of one by three, a little hole here for the wheel to go through. And once the wheels pass there, I sort of hold the vehicle with my body and just kick that back with my foot and that stops it right, and it stays in place. And then once that's set up, I, I got a rope ready here to sort of tighten down, ratchet down the wheel, and hold it in place so the thing doesn't move, right? And that, that, then I can do the rest of the work, okay? So that's all in terms of the door setup. Uh, also, I cut the corner off of it here. 
because uh, it needs to fit up where the seats are up there. There just wasn't room. And it has to go all the way to the back of the passenger seat for me to be able to shut this door, just because the length of this door happens to be too long. It doesn't need to be this long. The whole door could have been cut shorter. I just, I just did it in a rush, <laughs> as always, right? Now, in terms of ropes, uh, what I've done here is you know, I got these you know, HS ham handles or HF handles, whatever you, uh, <laughs> whatever you want to call them. Uh, anyway, um, and it, you wouldn't want to do this with, you know, a vehicle that, this is, this is a beater, right? So I can treat this thing as badly as I want. Um, this is not my wife's car. Fellas, don't do this to your wife's car. <laughs> anyway, I got a rope attached across the top here, just using a trucker's hitch, right? A nice tight rope here. And this, when I run the ropes that attach to the, um, to the bike from the, front of the vehicle to the bike, they slide over the top of these. So when I'm pulling, the, the tension goes upwards, right? Because I'm trying to, right? I'm trying to slide something up, right? So I need the rope to be kind of angled up. It just helps, not essential, but uh, the more up the rope is, the easier this all is, right? So I've got one there. And over here, I got another one. So anyway, I'll show you this as we go along, but the idea is, I got some pulleys here, right? I got a pulley down there, right? And uh, so I run this rope from here uh, to, the, to the bike where I've got a pulley attached, uh, back through this pulley and back to the bottom of the door where I have a pulley attached. And I grab the rope as it's coming through that pulley and lift and it's I mean, I tried just, I tried a couple days ago, just strapping the bike on there and lifting it with my own physical strength. And it was just too heavy. Um, you know, so I mean, some portion of the bike's weight is on the tailgate, but because it's angled down, it's not 50, 50. I'm not lifting it's a 200 pound bike and I'm not lifting a hundred pounds with the door on this angle. I'm lifting more like 140 pounds or whatever, right? And because it's awkward and you're picking it, it's not a barbell, right? I can, I can deadlift, you know, a good amount of weight. But because, because of the way you have to do it and you're trying to push at the same time and you're picking it right up off the ground, it's, um, you know, at 49 years old, um, it's just not smart. <laughs> you know, if you've got it in you to do all that, that's fine. But there's just so many things that can go wrong and you don't want to blow your back out and be, be wrecked for six weeks or, or longer as a result of that. So... Um, and anyway, that's why there's a pulley attached down there. And you can see I've got some wood attached and I got wood underneath and the pulleys through that so it can, you know, basically I've reinforced the door to handle whatever weight is acting on this rope by virtue of the pulley, right? Because this is going to be pulling, lifting about, a, you know, initially somewhere between 140, 150 pounds, right? Give or take. All right, so let me uh, get this thing started and I'll show you how I arrange the pulleys. One thing I forgot to mention, and you can't see it from, uh, from the angle the camera's on, but once I get the bike up here, I gotta lean it over. And uh, you don't want a bike laying down because it's really bad for a bike. You know, fuel will leak out of it for one, but it's just bad for a bike to have it laying down. So I got a bucket here and I sort of prop it up. So that's a, at a 45 degree angle which you know, I wouldn't recommend for long-term storage, but for an hour or so's drive, um, I mean, people can disagree with me. Um, I'm not a mechanic, but from what I read and looking into it, I don't think, uh, you know, having it tilted at 45 degrees for a couple hours is a really, is the end of the world. Um, you know, uh, you can disagree with me. You can make the argument one way or the other. I invite the debate. Uh, if I'm doing the wrong thing here, please let me know. Uh, this, this whole video is not about whether it's good or bad for, to put a bike in there. It's just about how to do it by yourself as one person, right? So anyway, using this, I sort of lean the bike onto it and that holds it in place. All right, so how do we do all this? All right, so I got the bike uh, reasonably lined up. All right, got a little momentum, get my hands ready to apply the brakes. And up we go. Yeah. All right, I got my knee against here. I'm gonna apply the brake, put the brake on. Slide the stopper back. And now turn the wheel as far 
to the, uh, I guess if I was sitting on the bike, far to the right as possible. Okay. There's a right and wrong way to turn the wheel. If you turn the turn the wheel the wrong way, it will not fit through the through the aperture. The, the steer, the handlebar will be in the way. I think this is the right way. <laughs> All right, now I get the bucket ready. It's fine for now. And just let her tip. There. Now, before I do anything else. I want to uh, secure the wheel so it doesn't go anywhere. All right, so how am I going to do that? Gonna, I got a rope here. I put it, put it through here. A trucker's hitch over here, you can't see, but I have a trucker's hitch. All right, so it's gonna crank down on that. All right, that'll keep that under control. It's gonna adjust this wheel over a little bit. There we go. That's reasonably well behaved, okay? Okay, now, next step, the ropes. All right, so I'm gonna take the rope. I got it attached back there. I'm gonna run it through here and through this pulley, which is attached right here. And back through here. All right. Now I'll bring it back here. Okay, so now I got it through there. I'll run it through this pulley down here. Okay, so now I've got three times as basically a, a force factor of three. I don't know what the technical term is in physics, but uh, now I'm able to, instead of having to lift like 150 pounds, it's more like 50 pounds, right? That sort of thing. And every, the more I pull, I'm lifting up here, but while I'm lifting up, it's being pulled this way as well, right? So let's see how this works. And you're sort of using your legs to, to guide the door as you go here. All right, now this is the point of no return. All right, we're basically, we're basically in now. The rest of it just push, because you can, you can just sort of you know, put your hip into it and push it like this, right? But I gotta show you one other thing. You remember earlier that I spoke to having the wheel turned the right way or the wrong way, okay? And if it's turned the wrong way, it won't fit through the hole. So this is the wrong way. <laughs> you can see the handle is just too high and I can't get it through, okay? Uh, it's counterintuitive, but if I turn it the other way, it'll slip through, so let me show you that. All right, so I shouldn't roll down now because I'm sort of, I'm in the vehicle, right? Or I got it in there. Famous last words, I guess, but. Okay, I can release this. You know, keeping myself handy so I can be in control of the situation as much as that's possible. I'll leave the rope there. Okay. So now all I'm gonna do is turn the wheel. As much as I can. I'll bring it again, bring it down tight to here. Okay. Just re tighten that. All 
I don't like the way that looks. Put it through here. Yeah. There we go. Now you see. And they kick this over. It'll go. Right? One more thing. Let me just move this in a little bit more. One more thing I forgot to mention. Let me show you this. You see here I got a piece of wood here. And that's because the, the door as it's sliding will catch on this little lip. And it will not go up at all. I need the door to go all the way up here. Right? A shorter door would be... Really, I should just cut the end off the door. I just haven't had time to do that. So I rigged that up. Just put a little bit of tape there to keep it from you know, sliding so it would stay put on the carpet of the back of the seat while that's happening, okay? So now I can get back. This is all underneath the door. And I can push and get it going. All right, here we go. <laughs> Despite my best efforts, it's still Riding up, that's okay. Yeah, I'm just pushing off with my thigh here, really, right? But see how that went through? It fit. It just fits. If you got a four by three and you turn the wheel, I guess that would be a left hand turn all the way, right? Uh, yeah, that's in enough to shut the door. Okay, let me show you one more thing. Just out of concern that I haven't, I can't do this with two hands, but basically what I do is I use a number of sticks, okay? And I get that bike up as high as I can get it till it's jammed right against the roof, basically, so that it's as close to 45 degrees or better tilted. Now you can see from that side, I just put a piece of wood between the bucket and the frame and then I'll add like wedges and things like that just to get it to get the bike up tilted as high as I can get it right and I've noticed so if you lay the bike flat uh, gasoline drips out of it and God knows what else happens in terms of the carburetor and stuff like that but if you do it like this uh, it seems to be okay uh, I've done some reading about people that you know were stuck having to store it you know, and shipping at a 45 degree angle, they say the bike was okay. Uh, I don't know, I am not a mechanic, I'm sure a bike mechanic would think this is the worst thing in the world, and it may or may not be, um, but it will work after doing this to it. Uh, I don't know how that affects the long-term longevity of the bike, but it's way better than laying it flat on the side, that's for damn sure. All right, so that's how you do it. You notice I'm not out of breath, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> I use the pulleys to do all the hard stuff, right? But that's how you get it in a vehicle if you want to, <laughs> and you're in the situation where that makes sense to you, how you get a Honda Ruckus or any other small bike with similar dimensions into the back of an SUV, if that's the solution that'll work for you. Uh, when you want to get the thing out, um, this, this uh, pulley is about, Oh, almost two feet from the door. Um, all I do is pull, I just pull, I just pull on it and just uh, have it resting against my thigh as I'm pulling it out. And you've got, it, you've got, it, you've got everything working for you because you're going downhill on the way back out. Again, check to see that your bike's secured. Make sure the brake, uh, you know, is still on, all that sort of stuff, right? Make sure everything's okay. Uh, get behind the bike so in case something goes weird it doesn't run off right but then just just start pulling right and you know as you uh as it gets lower just just hold this thing higher so you're not bent over so much and it, it comes down pretty easily almost you know like an automatic door right because you've got gravity working for you in that case so it's the other way getting it up because you're working against gravity that's the tricky part anyway honda ruckus in the back of a 
SUV. If it's got four feet wide by three feet high, totally doable. Don't know if it's good for the bike or bad for the bike, um, but um, that's how you get it in there. <laughs> Hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. And until next time, enjoy the outdoors on the cheap. Thanks for watching.